When we said we would eradicate smallpox from the world, the first disease in history eradicated, everybody was a skeptic. Skepticism is the inevitable companion of every great idea. We've always had pandemics. They're naturally occurring. How can you end them? My vision initially was this control room that would monitor all the different pandemic potential outbreaks all over the world. And it was a WHO top-down vision. And Mark Smolinski, who had joined me, began to supervise it. The challenge in starting any new organization is to take that passion and drive that everyone around the table has and turn it into something concrete. The priority was create an organization focused on early detection and early response. One of the challenges was bringing technology to parts of the world that didn't have technology. I remember one of the earliest things we did was take some really, really fancy walkie-talkie satellite device to Cambodia to see could you use devices like this in basically very, very um, rural areas to report on a regular basis should an outbreak happen. And it was very successful, which gave us an idea that why don't we bring a bunch of local developers together in Cambodia with developers from Silicon Valley and see what would happen. And that's when, you know, the concept of the iLab came up. When you're initially funded and your runway is a very short runway, and you have a very big task on your plate. You have to get super creative and super clever. One of the best things you can do there is have some early wins. We were fortunate to have that happen for us in Cambodia. Once we started to recognize that a team locally led on the ground would be a path to at least chip away at this enormous task, the floodgates opened. The fun then was finding who are the people that could do this? iLab was started in 2008, designing the bottom-up solution from the grassroots while helping partners in the regions to improve their work. It's not just about um, the capacity itself, but also having the local team that speak in local language, understanding the culture, understanding what's needed. So that one solution is deployed, people take ownership and then collaborating with each other. We have stopped an epidemic of disease in Cambodia, a country of 15 million people. That technology is spreading now to Vietnam, which is 100 million people. We've also built systems that work in South Africa that have caught and measured and provided data on over 10 million TB tests. We have worked with countries like Rwanda and Ethiopia and Tanzania to help them bring online systems that allow them to understand where they need to stand up new health facilities. We've had such tremendous success in other countries. Now we're going to bring some of that home. And the experience with Instead has taught me that it's a minimum of three to five years just to get the organization sort of off the ground. And then probably another good three years before it becomes the organization that you want it to become. You know, you've heard the expression, fail fast, fail often. I don't agree with fail fast, fail often. I agree with fail smartly. Make sure you take that learning. My friend Jeff Skoll says it's values, vision, mission, strategy, tactics, objectives, results, monitoring and evaluation. That's the catechism for good management. But I think it's people. Leadership can work if all you do are find the best people in the world, hire them, make sure they know what they're gonna do and get the hell out of the way. While my, uh, my vision at that time was top down, what has emerged is bottom up. And it's so much more powerful. It's just a better way to do it and in fact, in truth, it's the only way to do it.